Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Big news today in the world of open source technology, Linux kernel 6.13 is officially here. Linus Torvalds himself just announced its release and let me tell you, it's packed with exciting features, hardware support and improvements. So what's new in Linux 6.13? Stick around because I'm about to break it all down for you. Let's start with some major highlights. Linux 6.13 introduces lazy preemption support, which simplifies how the kernel handles preemption logic. It also includes support for running Linux in protected virtual machines under ARM CCA's confidential compute architecture, making it more secure. Additionally, there's user space shadow stack support for ARM64 via guarded control stack, and for Intel users, we now have support for six node sub NUMA clustering. AMD users aren't left behind either, as the kernel now supports split lock detection for AMD CPUs. Moving on to hardware improvements, the AMD P state driver is now the default on some newer AMD EPIC processors, offering better performance. For thermal management, thresholds can now be configured and adjusted from user space using Netlink. If you're using the latest Intel processors like Arrow Lake H or Panther Lake, you'll be happy to know they now have PMU support. MacBook Pro and Air users with models like MacBook Pro 11.2 and Air 7.2 also benefit from a new ACPI backlight quirk improving compatibility. For Raspberry Pi enthusiasts, Linux 6.13 adds support for hardware super pages in the V3D driver, enhancing performance for certain workloads. Audio systems also see improvements with a new pass-through mode for audio-related accelerators along with support for the MyP Disco 2.0 specification in the SoundWire subsystem, which enhances audio performance for devices using this standard. Networking has seen a lot of love in this release. The RTNL lock has been converted into a per network namespace lock, which reduces contention in namespace heavy workloads. A new IRQ suspension mechanism has been introduced to handle busy application periods more efficiently and per NAPI configuration is now possible through Netlink. Additionally, the new TXHW shaping API allows for finer control over traffic shaping. On the file system front, Linux 6.13 brings plenty of enhancements. The F2FS file system now supports device aliasing, which allows you to reclaim space by deleting aliased files in the root directory. XFS has gained basic support for atomic write operations, while the Fuse file system has undergone page-to-folio conversions and now supports configurable maximum request sizes via SysTTL. The EXT4 file system sees numerous bug fixes and cleanups, while the XFAT file system gets a performance boost through reduced FAT chain traversal. BTRFS users will notice improved performance due to reduced lock contention when traversing extend buffers and searching for inline back refs. Hardware support has also been significantly enhanced in this release. Linux 6.13 now supports a range of new devices, including Surface Pro, 9.5G tablets, Adreno A6 6 3 GPUs, All Winner H616 processors, AMD ACP 6.3, Qualcomm SM8750, Realtek R T721 audio chips, and NT36672A touchscreens. Additionally, NVIDIA Mellanox, MLX5 network devices now work seamlessly and a new virtual CPU freq driver has been introduced to improve performance and power management for virtual machines. For developers, Linux 6.13 adds trace event support for Rust and introduces a new memory allocator. RISC-V architecture receives a boost with pointer masking support as well as improvements like QS pin lock on systems with Zakas and Zabha. Real-time computing capabilities have also been extended to the LungArch architecture. If you're eager to try out Linux 6.13, it's available for download from Linus Torvalds' Gitree or kernel.org. However, if you prefer a smoother experience, I'd recommend waiting for your Linux distribution to include it in their stable software repositories. And the future is already looking bright. With Linux 6.13 released, the merge window for Linux 6.14 is now open. The first release candidate is set to drop on February 2nd, and the stable release is expected by the end of March 2025. That's all for today's breakdown of Linux kernel 6.13. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what feature you're most excited about. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.